Good afternoon. I'm Jordan Roth, and thank you for tuning in to episode 33 of Dallas Aesthetic Podcast. I'm lucky to be here with Catherine Ansman. Hello, Jordan. Thank you for inviting me to be part of you know this this wonderful arts occurrence here. Oh, it's a pleasure. So you're in from Houston. Yes, I drove up on 45. I really am not ready to return to Houston, but I feel like I'm going to go back this evening, but I, I can't wait to come, you know, motor on up again to Dallas. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're here? Well, to me, Dallas is really all about the art people. You're one of them that makes everything happen. You know, what you're curating, tracking artists, and really the the, the people here are the gateway. You, your um, Liliana Block, our friend um, James Bland, saw Chris Byrne up here. Um, my colleagues at Paper City Magazine, Christina Geyer, Billy Fong, Lisa, Lisa Chaddock Collins. So it's really, Dallas is a city of the arts, but we have amazing people that are, are the Sherpas to that, and of course the artists. So, and you know, Rachel at the, Rachel Rogerson at the Max. So when you have, when you, you've got your posse here, yeah. the world, the world, world opens up. Yeah. 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 And almost not enough time. N not, not enough, not enough time. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned Paper City. What do you do for Paper City? Paper City, I'm the art person. You know, there's, I'm one of the executive editors and, you know, just really part of a team. It's a very collaborative. I think we're in the world of, the world of hierarchy has gone away. Mm -hmm. The magazine, we've always been in a world of collaboration. Uh, the magazine is now 25 years old. Wow. We're celebrating that this fall. We've been in Dallas for 20 years. So, it's just, you know, you're making things happen. It's also a time of activism. I was just visiting with our, our Dallas editor-in-chief, and we want to really ask questions. We have just done a recently, Billy Fong just did an article about gay Dallas. You know, we're really in a time when the, the magazine has a responsibility to do that, and the whole world is changing, and we need to ask questions. And, of course, the art world is, 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 is part of that, yeah. How cool. I had no idea that the magazine was 25 years old. Yes, um, and... And then, you know, and, but in Dallas for 20, 20, 20 even, years. Even yeah. then, I feel, I feel old. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 very, we're very, we're very, we're young. We're, we're just young. all getting yeah. started here. Yeah, 25 years young. Um, and then another really exciting thing is that you're working on a book. Yes, we're, we're working on the volume two of Texas Artists Today, and our photographer, James Bland, is, is up here. He's been actually photographing Dallas artists and musicians, the musicians going back to the 80s. So he's oh, a wow. tremendous, you know, he's got great stories, um, you know, the punk scene here, also stories about photographing James Bland, very good friends with uh, uh, Billy, um, Billy Gibbons. I mean, so he's really very committed to documenting the creative the creative world here so we're collaborating together on the on 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 the book and of course Dallas is very important the creatives working here so it's challenging to be able to you know make sure all everyone's you you include as many voices as possible yeah yeah and uh, his photographs are just amazing he makes people look as if they're in their art and in, in, in many of them well James is really he likes he has a degree of formality um, he's a, a bit of a paradox, you know, kind of a Texan, very, but you know, very liberal, and he he really, you know, likes to tell a narrative, and he he does these beautiful, they're organic, but there's you know, they're they're slightly staged too, so it's really yeah. interesting form of photography. And um, the original book, the first edition, yes. you've got a copy here. Yes. Do you want to kind of hold I'll that hold, up? I'll hold this hold this up here. Yeah. So uh, Texas Artists Today came out like almost 10 years ago. It was t t November of 2010, and we did have a big, one of the big launch events was up here at the Dallas, Dallas Contemporary. I was there. And, <laughs> you know, it was a great evening. In fact, um, we sold more books at the Dallas event than we did at the Houston event, which wow. was very successful. But it just, it, it shows, you know, what's going on here. I mean, Dallas and Houston are really major places for art making. Fort Worth is in there in Austin of San Antonio, but these are the places where the whole scene is developing. So, you know, it's very, very important to be up here. So I'll be coming up more, more often. Yeah. Awesome. And in case anyone's interested, I found a copy of that on Amazon yeah. for 900 and some odd dollars. You know, it is. People, people yeah. don't want to get rid of them. So, <laughs> well, that's good. Is Craig, who Craig Massey, who's one of our business, 
Well, he is a patron and really has been the business advisor. He's leading sponsorships. He's, you know, he's um, is at Bank of America Private Wealth, but he said it's, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a person in finance is like, well, this is kind of like a stock asset. Well, of course, we, you know, nobody thinks about art like that, really, but it's exciting to see that the book has been well received and has been, you know, collected particularly for the artist because that's the purpose of the book. Yeah, yeah totally. And you're not going to find one at half price books, most likely. <laughs> no, if you do, <laughs> get right over there now. Yeah, get it. Um, and I, I saw something when when you speak about Dallas and Houston. I, I watched a little clip from um, your fundraising party in Houston for the second book, and um, I think it was Lester Marks was talking about. Um, Houston being a really young scene compared to New York and um, and LA and whatnot being 40 years old um, and and I think Dallas is probably 10 years at least 10 years younger than Houston and that's an exciting thing that, that we're working with young scenes we, where we, we can kind of yes. like create just create whatever needs to be well, this is a time to create, and I think, you know, yourself being, you know, celebrating 10 years as a gallerist, there are opportunities and to, to do things in new ways, and also how you've done it with two, dual spaces, different parts of town, and, you know, Dallas is also, these new parts of town are being developed, mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, it's really smart, but it's, it's, the Dallas scene has so transformed since the birth of the Dallas Art Fair 11 years ago, oh, yeah. and it's very exciting to see that. And there are, everything is possible. I think we said that yeah. last night at dinner. Yeah. Everything is possible and there are new ways to bring people into the art scene. So it's really, I think it's a time where we have to, as gallerists are, you know, the conduits, they're the people that are the translators. So there are so many opportunities to tell the art story and bring the audiences together that are, I mean, it can be very exciting and, mm -hmm. and, and, and new. Yeah. A, a new way to do things. Yeah. What are some things that are happening in Houston that, that may not have um, come up north to Dallas yet? Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, one of my favorite galleries in Houston is Jonathan Hobson Gallery. They just op they debuted their, their Pride show. And it's, it's really about, you know, it's in, a, in a, a beautiful, modest bungalow, arts and craft. It's, you know, it's a dialogue. You go in there and you're in domestic space and having a dialogue. And they're doing very interesting programming. Um, it's, it's, it's a very personal space. But what I'm really looking forward to is um, they're doing a, a dinner party series where it's a, it's a dialogue about diversity. And Lovey Olivia is one of the artists at Pratika. And I'm not going to pronounce her last name correctly. But they're, they have a collaborative to Dykes and a Knife. And they're presenting... A dinner party, July 11th, which is really about a dialogue, like a salon. Yeah. And then there's they're serving special vegan food. One I think comes from South Asia, and the others from Latin America. So, and then there's an opportunity to acquire some ceramics. But people are coming together and having a conversation. And I think also, we want that's what we were visiting about the Max Space. I think having a sense of intimacy and communication, and also a dialogue over food. You know, food is big stories coming out of Dallas and Houston and there's such engagement with food culture chefs these new concepts and they also stand for diversity I mean so yeah. we we need to kind of the art world should look at what's being done in the food world and embrace it embrace it and have some kind of cross-pollination in a way that that can be done in an interesting way so in this case that's the dinner party I'm really looking forward to to going there. And then we have some great new spaces. Um, the Moody Center at Rice, um, Tessa Dean was there for a talk. But there are spaces where there's a dialogue. It's mm -hmm. not just a building. I mean, I think sometimes with buildings, buildings are, a building is a building, but it yeah. has to be activated. And the Moody Center at Rice is, you know, the science is folded in there, dance, and it's, and they always have conversations. So I, I don't know, they had a, um, from the Trisha Brown dance troupe, there was the conversation there. So, and then there's also Asia Society is doing some very, they have a show now, I think it's Sightlines, and there are artists from out, five artists from Texas with Asian heritage doing installation work, and you walk in there. It is such a startling, beautiful, pristine space, but they've activated it, and the work just takes over the space. And there's one piece by Prince Thomas about the you know, war deaths in the Middle East, but it's done in a way that's, you know, there are pennies there and they're white and it's such, it's beautiful and it's poignant. 
and it, it's just done for that one gallery. And there's another artist from Tyler. I'm, I, I, I need to recall her name, but she's done out of paper plates, and it's like a, it's a very abstract form in space, twisting like a dragon, but very abstract. So oh, wow. I think, you know, having these, these places for diversity and dialogues, and I'm thinking about the Mac here, the intimacy and the video that Charles G. D. Mitchell, the, the video festival, I mean, seeing that work, you know, engaging in work and mm -hmm. having places where people can really have, you know, they're, they're being, you're being elevated and you're having a dialogue and your eyes growing. I mean, seeing these things, I mean, I think we just need to keep looking at work and, you know, engaging in artists and, and the people that are part of the art scene. Yeah. You know, like yourself, um, Rachel, you know, all these things. And it's a really, it's kind of an expanding, expanding universe time, I think, in Texas particularly. The Mac yeah. had a, a recent um, art talk called IRL in real life. And it was initially just to discuss um, video art um, in real life, you know, having the real life discussion. And then um, in speaking with the director, Rachel, uh, about that title, she thought, you know, we might just continue that and have IRL um, talks, you know, on, a, on the regular. And I think that could be great. People, um, people, people love, like getting together. And, you know, they just want to have a conversation. I think, you know, that's why it's important to have new models because, you know, there's so much going on in everyone's world now. We live in an age of distraction. There's also, you know, people have retail therapy too. I mean, there's so much going on. So at the end of the day, you want to present a new way because the old idea of openings and wine and just going and looking at things or not looking or it's nice for people to come together but sometimes the art is like you're, it's, you're, it's like secondary it, it's secondary and if you really want to see something you don't want your first memory over someone's shoulder right but yeah. you, you also do want to come together it's nice to come together and you kind of get caught up like maybe what that creative person is doing so that's important too but it's just how you sort of give both types yeah. of experiences yeah yeah I try to do that a little bit with the podcast mm -hmm. is to, yeah. to focus in on an art talk that can be um, around when, you know, not just Tuesday or Tuesday, Saturday from yes. two to four or whatever, because, yes. you know, not everyone can make it. So we'll go ahead and do this and archive it and, and you know, make it available for people. This is one effort um, that I've, I've worked on to try to to add more more depth. Well, um, people want, want that and also like to have more depth because we we have distillations available to people now yeah and we have we're living in a rich time where there's so much available but sometimes it's like going to like going to miami in december like if you you have to know how to partake of the banquet yeah you know and it makes it, things richer if you can really or, or just like you know when you have a, a museum experience you don't have to see the whole museum or if you're going to fort worth you don't have to see all three museums in one day right you just go to one and you see that and really enjoy enjoy that. And people do want do want depth. We're we're hungry for that. Yeah, I, I find that when I go to an art fair, for instance, um, if I go to Freeze in New York, I'll go um, a few different times so that I can actually spend time. In the so you're you're really doing that and, yeah. and you know connecting in a very thoughtful and meaningful way where you're really making a connection and discovering. And you know there might be somebody you show or you discover or you connect with for a nonprofit here and that's really the experience because otherwise you know we're kind of getting a gloss of an experience right and i think you know sometimes people don't realize that it's possible to get to a deeper level yeah where you're really having that 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 connection yeah you yeah, know I, I enjoy that like, thoroughly um, so when's the next edition of the book plan to come out? Well, that is, you know, I, I tell you people it's, it's 2021 yeah. and, and then, then there's a pause and you're like, okay, there's a pause. And what does the pause mean? And I think, you know, it's sort of like, there are a lot of intricacies mm -hmm. and coordination, you know, preparing the artist stories, getting portraits made, a lot of production, a lot of production and also imagery and writing essays and, so we're we're fortunate um we're working with a nonprofit. i know we'll work with one in dallas as well but we're working with art lake houston that has the texas artists of the year and they're very community oriented and also at the middle of as i'm sure you know, you know like the mac here is that at the middle of really questioning you know is everyone being represented mm -hmm. or all voices being heard so they're helping with 
the, a lot of the admin, administrative work, oh, but it's great. still very, you know, very intricate. So we're the the ideal dream have it come out. Fall books have a different feeling. Yeah, they a spring book is 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 amazing. Like William Middleton's Menil biography came out in the spring, but the fall book is it it just has a sense of like imprimatur, a gravitas. So we're yeah, wanting to have this out with the art world, the too. art world with the fall season. I mean, the fall season it was where it begins. Like mm -hmm. the spring season is kind of the conclusion of the fall season exactly. in a way, right? So you want it to come yeah. out in the fall. So that's what we we want to do, and we have a lot of angels and people that have come come forward. We uh, one of our our patrons in Houston is Rania Daniel. She is she and her husband had the Levant Foundation for understanding the Middle East. So they hosted the um, inaugural fundraising event at their restaurant La Tabla, which is a French restaurant. And it was, they underwrite the whole evening for the art world. And we've, we raised um, that evening, it was about $160,000 wow. in the art auction, but was really important. And this is something, you know, really important. The artists that donated, they got half of that. Oh, so that, that was, you know, the artists, you cannot ask artists to donate. They have to get, you know, like they have to get what they would get participating in a gallery. So, I'd love to see that model adopted yes. more. Yeah, I mean, because artists can't be, they're asked for things and sort of promise, well, this is going to be a benefit. Mm -hmm. And you'll get exposure. You get exposure. And it's like Glass Tower. Glass Tower always gives the artist in their auctions 50%. It's really, it's really, it's the really right thing important. To do. Yeah. You know, and sometimes artists are asked, well, if you want to, like, they're given options, which percentage yeah. too. But it's really important that they get, yeah. you know, their, their, Oh, for sure. Yes. And then they're more enthusiastic yes. about it, too. Yes. We were able to get larger pieces. You know, Howard Sherman literally came back from New York. He donated a large piece. And, you know, it went to – actually, it's interesting because Howard's work went to young – well, there were there were substantial collectors, Dwin and Mark Nguyen. You know, they were, you know, Vietnamese descent. They're, they have amazing, like, dental practices they start. This, this is kind of American dream couple. They're lovely. And they went to, the, went to their collection, and they ended up, when Art League was looking for co-chairs for their, uh, their gala last year, you know, Jenny Ash, director, asked them, and they ended up being – so it was kind of that was the Howard Sherman thing. So they ended up oh, sharing awesome. the, their gala, and it was the most successful ever in their history. So, oh, And that cool. was through the Howard Sherman painting. So that's, that's a diversion. Oh, I love it, yes. though. I love how <laughs> art makes these connections yes. and yeah. just participating in it for the first yes. time. I have one collector who has a party every time he gets a piece of art. Well, see, this is, this is like – this is so great, and it's something – like – we need to do more of that. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, when the, when the book gets closer, um, I want to promote it on here too, and and we're gonna like let everyone know like hurry up, you know, because they're gonna sell out fast. Well, hurry up, and we're gonna do pre-orders, yeah. and it will be a you know will be another exciting time. But you know, we're really definitely here. Do, we're doing photography this week. We've kept James busy, nice. you know. So, and we'll be getting with you about artists in your in your stable. It's you know, of course, the challenging part is you know, there'll be more artists in this book yeah. than last time. So the, the challenging is how do you, there, there are how more voices, yeah. yeah, more voices here. Well, I can't wait to see who, who some of these people will be. Um, well, it's so exciting to have you here. I, I figure, I, I think we, we covered a lot of ground. Well, this is, you know, thank you, Jordan. And thank you for everything you're doing. I mean, you're a key figure here and you're also, you know, with your board service at the Mac and everything you're doing in the different parts of town. And, and really you're tracking, we talked about that last night, you're tracking about at least 140 people here. And, you know, <laughs> we need you in Houston. Please come down. Okay. Oh, I'll come visit. <laughs> okay. Anytime. That sounds great. All right. Well, um, Thanks for joining. This is this is it for today, and we're gonna go go on a tour. We're, we're gonna go on the tour. Yeah. Thank you. Right, okay. Bye. bye.